Hello my freaky darlings, I'm Holo Anarchy, and today we're playing a bit of an older game. This is from 2015 and it's called Belladonna. It's like a point and click visual novel, very Frankenstein themed. I just love it. And I want to share it all with you. game in about three years. Oh, the physical sensation. Pain? I'm alive? That's odd. I don't feel alive. What's going on? I have no memories of anything before this point in time. My mind is tabula rasa, yet I have a language. I seem to be in some laboratory of sorts. Maybe I can find out what happened if I look around. I forgot, uh, <laughs> I forgot how bad the lip sync was and a little bit of the voice acting, but you know, they worked with what they had. Gotta love the whole Monster High broken back figure. A torture device turned into a strange machine. What kind of place is this? My very first memory is waking up on this thing. Before that, nothing. I wonder what I am. You'll find out. Books. A lot of natural philosophy and chemistry. Something by an M.W. Shelley. <laughs> Mary Wollenstonecraft Shelley. And because there are sparkles coming from this. There's a handwritten note here. Maybe it can shed some light on my situation. It is with shaking hands and heavy heartbeats I gather before me the instruments of my last desperate attempt. I find myself on the threshold of my toils, a turning point. For should I fail tonight, I doubt I shall find the strength and resolve to continue. At my feet now lays the lifeless remains of my beautiful Belladonna. A few hours ago, my wife was alive and well, and now she's been cut open, dissected, altered, and artificially reconstructed. From the second she gave up her final breath, I might, or I have worked tires, tirelessly to preserve and prepare her corpus that I might infuse a spark of being back into her lifeless limbs. This is the final test of all my research and experimentation. The past five years, the complete revivification of a human being, body, and soul. The anxiety I feel is agonizing, but I cannot let it hinder me from carrying out what I must do for my own sake and for hers. This procedure must not fail. In my feverish dreams, my wife appears as such a lovely creature, so far removed from this creation before me. Her cheeks, once so full of laughter, are now pale almost to the point of transparency with the skin stretched so thin over the cranium it threatens to rip at any moment. Her eyes would shine like the night sky, but are now empty, watery, and yellowish. I have to cling to my conviction that she will regain her former grace and vitality when she's brought back to the realm of the living. Her eyes will light up with the flame of life, a Promethean flame stolen from the very gods. From this night on, man shall be the master of his own destiny, and God shall no longer be above us. As I write, the engines of life are finally heating up, the last of the preparations are coming into order. The crucial moment is ever approaching. The time has come. Success! The attempt was a success! She is alive! Look at that. All the little notes I can get. There's a screwdriver in this toolbox. Better take it. Yeah, better safe than sorry. Go on. A human skull or a paperweight? Both. It's a brain in a jar. I wonder what it's thinking. I have no idea what's inside of this, but it glows. It sure does. That is one ugly gargoyle. Looks like a George to me. <laughs> George. The door won't budge. It seems to be barred from the other side. I might be able to unscrew these hinges, though. The 
screws on these hinges are rusty and stuck. I need some lubricant to loosen them up. With such a multitude of jars and bottles, at least one must have some sort of oil in it. Yep, there we go. This oil looks expensive. Let's waste it. <laughs> Girl after my own heart. I smeared some oil on the rusty screws. That should loosen them up. I don't think that's how that works, but you know what? I'm free. What a dedicated night to guard a damp dungeon like this. Maybe he was demoted. <laughs> Maybe he likes the dark. Maybe he's secretly a poet. I bet his name is Roland. It's so cute how she just names things. Another piece of paper. This was written long before the last one. Work is going great. Kept a rat alive for one hour and 26 minutes last night. We'll move on to larger mammals within the week. I find my life more and more polarized into two phases. I remember times when I used to climb up and down the stairs like a squirrel each day. But now I spend most of my time, and indeed most of my thoughts, down here in my laboratory. Only to step upstairs at night to sleep. It is warmer upstairs in the living area. But it is boring and understimulating. Down here is where I make progress. Down here is what matters. And as I lay awake beside my sleeping wife, I often wish I was down here with my experiments. Belladonna grows increasingly distant. Ever since that fateful night when our baby Lucas gave up his last breath, she has lost all traces of her old self. God knows what she's thinking about as she silently gazes into the empty air or restlessly paces back and forth in the Great Hall. I, at least, am working with my grief. I have turned my attention to the science of life and death, and not a day goes by when I do not think of how my son was untimely taken from me. This is the thought that drives me, in this, the greatest of ambitions. My own son will never return. I have accepted that now. But thanks to me and my work, the cold, ruthless contrast between living and dead will in the future be much softer, maybe even completely erased. My wife, though, has let our grief devour her whole. She's emotionally and intellectually paralyzed, it seems to me. All her creativity and quickness of thought, the wittiness of her speech, and the nimble way she used to jump from one conclusion to the next, all those qualities that made me fall in love with her in the first place, they've all been snuffed out like the flame of a candle. This makes me wonder why I even bother to go up to her bed every night. The shell in which she has enclosed herself cannot be breached by anything I say or do. It is almost as though she's involved with someone other than me. I feel ridiculous for even writing it down. No, it seems ludicrous that uh, Belladonna's disinterest in me is due to her seeing another man. I will not accuse her of that. It is uh, just one of the many strange ideas that seem to appear in my head when I'm down here by myself. I'm probably just tired. I'd better try and get some sleep as soon as this rat's heart stops beating. Nothing interesting to say. A heart it rat. looks like someone has been sleeping quite a lot in this sorry excuse for a bed, and it was hardly the suit of armor. But why would someone choose to sleep down here? They're not well. More writings from the lonely doctor. Curse my miserable existence, the hopelessness from which I see no conceivable escape. I cannot rid myself of the feeling that there is something of the utmost importance that I need to take care of, but that it is not yet time that something beyond my control needs to be completed first. I carry inside me a sensation of waiting, yet I cannot name the thing I am waiting for. In the meantime, all I can do is work. I do make progress, but at an excruciatingly slow rate, and nothing I accomplish seems to calm the anxiety in my head. I sleep only a few hours every night and cannot remember my last hot meal. I'm feverish and jump at the smallest of sounds. What am I missing? I'm spending more and more time down here with my research. I only occasionally go upstairs to sleep in the master bedroom. Most nights I sleep, if at all, in a makeshift bunk I've constructed in the cellar. It's not as comfortable, but my research is at a point where it oftentimes requires my constant attention and comfort is not my priority. I'm certain I am advancing ever closer to a significant breakthrough, but it is though I am powerless to control or even affect the rate of its occurrence. And on top of this, 
I cannot rid my mind of the idea that Belladonna has forgotten me and taken a new lover. A new man in her life. Someone more lively than me, perhaps? Someone who can still look at life with joy and optimism to match her own grave tragedy, uh, or by her, or to match her own by grave tragedy unaffected humor. I forgot about the phrasing of that one. That's a little odd. Yet, who would that be? I can remember friends we used to have. In my memory, our wedding was a crowded and festive event. But it's been years since this castle has seen any visitors. I have no time for social obligations, and Belladonna seems to have given up on everything that is pleasant in life. I suspect the castle is in an undesirable condition as well. Almost all of the staff has left us. We are down to but one girl who dusts the cupboards and lights and the fireplaces. I don't see much of her either in these days. For all I know, she might be gone as well. There cannot be, or there cannot possibly be a man in Belladonna's life apart from me. Another locked door. Let's take a peek through. It's the key I'm after. I can't reach it with my hands. I wonder what I can invent to retrieve it. Which means we're going back to the lab. That hook's not anything. I forget, I don't think this rope is anything. Clearly not. Why is there an iron gate right there? Hello, Roland. There's a long stick here. Perhaps it was used to try to chase away rats when trying to sleep. It's yours now, baby. I'm not mistaken, there was a hook somewhere. I don't see it. Mousing over doesn't give me any clues. Magnet! That might be what I'm looking for. I love magnets. Look, I can attach the magnet to the end of the stick. It looks like the legs of a frog hooked up with wires. And I'm pretty sure it moves when I'm not watching. But only when she's not watching. Ooh, surgical tools. Shiny. Remember, she just woke up from being dead and she's got a wind-up brain now, so be nice to her. Another locked door. Let's take a peek through. Magnet on a stick. Let's hope this works. Haha, <laughs> just as planned. I got the basement key. Let's unlock this door. Let's unlock this door. Oh my god. Why do I need to use the actual key on there to do that? More letters. Has he figured it out yet? <laughs> I see now that my suspicions have been well grounded, albeit aimed in the wrong direction. Belladonna is not seeing another man, she is seeing a woman. I'm convinced it must be that maid, Claire, whatever her name might be. She and Belladonna are up to something, I'm sure of it. And to think of all the hours I've stuck down here caught in my dreadful work, leaving them free to roam and left their own devices upstairs. Of course they found each other, the only living things in this whole castle besides me and my week-long rabbits. They have it all figured out. When I come up at night, they act all innocent, keeping their mutual secret from me as a playful game, but as soon as I descend into the laboratory, 
They are in an a words. They are in each other's arms again. But what can I do? The progression of events are beyond my control, just like my work. I slave away in my ghoulish endeavor, making progress every hour, but never getting anywhere, and simultaneously Belladonna slipping away from me further and further for every night, yet nothing ever changes. Should I confront them? Storm up there? Hoping to catch the two in the act? Take back the life that was mine? The wife that was mine? No. I have no reason for my silly suspicions, no evidence whatsoever. Merely a, merely a thought stuck in my brain, refusing to leave. So I remain passive, as always, and a new day is one more where I am unable to make an action, unable to change my wretched situation. A couple of cogwheels on the floor. They must have fallen off the mechanism when the door slammed shut. I wonder if I can put them back. Alright, uh, so you go on square one. Not yet. Okay, I suppose we do that one first. Not yet. What the hell do you mean, not yet? A big and heavy candlestick. It looks like there used to be two of them. <laughs> Girl page. The doctor is losing it. He's just scribbling down nonsense by now. What will he do if he ever acts on his wild suspicions? That's a hard word to say. <laughs> it is clear to me what I must do. I am now convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that my wife is unfaithful. They still hide it very well. Her and that housemaid. But my logical mind tells me there's no other explanation. For countless hours, I have pondered this situation. The more I think about it, the more certain I become that my judgment is correct. These countless hours are hours I could have spent uh, thinking about my work. It is clear to me I will never be able to fully concentrate on the puzzles at hand as long as my thoughts keep creeping back to my wife and her new lover. This is the very reason that my research is progressing at such an agonizingly slow pace. So it is clear to me what I must do. Belladonna herself is the person who I want back into my life, so I cannot punish her. That leaves her lover, the young maid. She is unimportant, and it is she that must go. I could fire her and throw her out of the household, but I fear this would not resolve anything. The two of them would still know of each other, and they could write secret forbidden love letters or meet up at secluded rendezvous. No. It's clear to me what I must do. I must get rid of the maid for good. A plan is already taking form in my head. In the greenhouse out back, I keep a lot of plants and herbs. One of the specimens I have is called Deadly Nightshade, an interesting plant with many medical uses, but its renown comes from the fact that its extract is lethal <laughs> already at small doses. Preparing a powder from this poisonous plant is not at all problematic. Getting the victim to ingest the dose will be a challenge, but I expect to have ample opportunity. They're not aware that I know the truth and thus suspect nothing. The maid will fall ill, and within a short time, she'll die of seemingly natural causes. No one will be the wiser concerning the true circumstances of her deny demise. A deadly nightshade is merely the common name for this plant. Its scientific name is Atropa belladonna. The symmetry strikes me as beautiful. The poor girl strayed too close to the belladonna, and that would be the death of her. It's a mortar, and a pestle too. They seem to belong here, but I'll remember where they are in case I need them another time. It's warm. I haven't realized until now just how cold my body is. Because you're a corpse. The label says Dr. Wolfram von Trauerschloss. So this is the man who brings the dead back to life. He looks as though he would have been handsome once. Once. Maybe. This story is so sad. I don't even know if I want to read this one. You're gonna. My wife took the wayward maid's death harder than I expected, further confirming my suspicions that they were indeed having a secretive love affair. She's passionate and irrational, raging all day and crying all night, 
For a few months ago, the cold shroud of silence lay over our house. There is now a wail there is now the wailing shrieks of bedlam. One should think that she would be used to dealing with the grief of lost loved ones by now, bastard. However, in all sincerity, I don't believe she was as ever as affected by the death of our only son as I was. I also suspect that she might have guessed I had something to do with her lover's demise. If she wouldn't talk to me before, now she yells and barks at my every movement. I hardly leave my laboratory these days. I even have a small bed down here where I sleep the few hours I'm not working. All the while she prowls, prowls around upstairs like a hungry tiger and attacks me over futile nitpicks as soon as I poke my head out. What happened to the love we shared when we were married? We were going to live together in her inherited castle. We were going to have children together. Now all I get is abuse and a cold bed in the basement. All I want is for things to go back the way they were before all of this. The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. This must be the ashes of Wolfram's son. A beautiful china bowl. It looks hand-painted. <gasps> A dead body. <laughs> It's the body of Dr. Von Trauerschloss. He's dead. And what's more, he's been murdered. But who could have done this? Give me three guesses. Around. The missing candlestick. And it seems to be the murder weapon. And now you have it. There's a letter clutched in his hand. His final words are a clue left by the killer. Over the course of a sleepless night, I have thought my through the next course of action from every possible angle, for it is indeed time for me to take action again. Even with the troublesome maid out of the way, I see little chance of getting my old Belladonna back. If anything, she's worse now than ever before. But I have an idea, one that kept me awake all night. I have come very far in my research by now. I can fairly predictably create living creatures that are stable enough to not spontaneously die again. This is consistent through many different species of animal. I've noticed something peculiar, though. The returned creature seems strangely vacant and sluggish. It's almost as though the body is brought back to life. The soul is forever lost. The creation is perfectly functional and responds to stimuli, just as if it were truly alive, but the mysterious spark of will seems to be missing. I know of no other way to describe the phenomenon. This bothered me before, but now I cannot help to think this might suit my needs. Isn't it precisely the strong will of my wife that is causing all my problems? There's no need to be poetic with flowers this time. I am in no short supply of lethal substances in the laboratory and poison suits my needs well as it leaves no physical trauma on the body. I'll still need to make incisions in the corpse to replace internal organs with clockwork parts, but stitching together surgical cuts is much simpler than trying to repair unhealed bodily damage. The integrity of her visage is a priority. To extinguish Belladonna's current life, Give her a new one to bring her body and her mind back, minus soul and free will. A beautiful, obedient automaton, a mechanical doll with all the functionality of a woman, but who's responsive and does what she's told. That, that, my dear future reader, would truly be something. I think it's high time that I tried my revivification process on a human subject. How'd that go for you? I don't think it went well. This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of this story. If you had asked me a few years ago about my future, I could have never fathomed my life today would be as it is. So strange a path as twists of fate set upon me that I wake every morning bewildered and like a small child I expect anything and everything to happen during each new day. The night my planned future snapped out of joint and took a whole new direction was the night my son Lucas died. I married Dr. Wolfram von Trauerschloss in the spring, and we loved each other deeply back then. How young we were! He was an educated gentleman from the University of Ingolstadt, and I had first assumed we would get a flat in Vienna. Instead, he convinced me we should live in my family's old castle and accept our roles as old-fashioned nobility to the little village down the hill. We moved into the castle with a staff of thirty servants, beginning the task of breathing life and joy into the majestic halls. 
At this time, I expected to live out my life as a lady of the household, minding the servants and, indeed, raising children. Before long, our first son was born, and shortly after that, he once again departed. I was devastated, of course, but Lucas had been sickly from his first day, and even though my husband had blocked out the possibility from his mind, I was not entirely surprised when it happened. Nonetheless, it changed us. I believe Wolfram blames me for what happened, that he thinks it was somehow my fault. He retreated into his laboratory in the old dungeon and started doing unholy experiments and God knows what. Those were dark times. Instead of a household and a child to take care of, I now had no guests, practically no husband, and no child. Everything I thought would occupy my time was gone, and all I could do was grieve in solitude. The castle staff left one by one until there was only a handful still here. My existence was meaningless, and I spent my days doing nothing. But I dealt with my grief in my own way, and in time the claws of melancholy began loosening their grip on me. In so many ways, I have Clara to thank for that. There's a bottle of milk out here. I wonder how long it's been here. At any rate, it's frozen completely solid. No wonder in this cold. One more Belladonna letter. Let's read about this Clara figure. Clara Stiver was one of the uh, several chambermaids we hired when we moved into the castle shortly after the marriage. In the warm light of recent events, I feel as though I could pick her out of a crowd already at this time, but I suspect that the truth is she was just another servant of many, and I didn't pay her close to the attention I now know she deserves. The time following the death of Lucas is hazy and unclear in my memory. I know I spent most of my time in an armchair in the living room, staring out the window. I know now this must have been a difficult time for the staff as well. My apathy left them without a purpose, as more and more of the household was shut down. Soon the cooks and stable grooms began abandoning what they wisely identified as a sinking ship. As more and more of the staff left the castle to seek employment elsewhere, there was less and less reason for the rest to stay, and the household was quickly decimated. But throughout all of this, young Clara never left my side, and she gradually shouldered more and more of the household responsibilities, making it her task to take care of me and nurse me through my melancholy. It was her loyalty and industriousness when everyone else left that finally brought me back from my condition. And indeed, her love. As I now sit down to write this, it has been a long, unbroken chain of happy days. Clara and I have the whole castle practically to ourselves and nothing to do but enjoy our lives and each other. We sleep in a new room every night, cook our own food, and have picnics under tables or in front of the fireplace. We have no incentive whatsoever to uphold convention and norms when this house has become like a secure pocket inside the rest of reality. In truth, this touches on what I treasure most in Clara. Neither of us reap any concrete benefits from our union, neither financial nor societal. There is no embedded purpose of producing heirs. Our relationship exists solely for itself and is its own reward. I am already adopting her adorable habit of naming inanimate objects. The castle is not quite ours, however. Wolfram still looks like a ghoul downstairs and occasionally emerges and spends a night up here with me. We have little in common anymore. In fact, he's like a completely new person. His mind is vacant, his stare is distant, he's thinner than ever before, and he shivers with cold. Clara, jokingly, suggested that we might have him declared mad and sent off to an institution. An innocent idea in her mind, but with some planning, this act might eventually approve to be our shortest path to finally reclaiming this old castle for us alone. Blue Bloods and their fucking scheming. It says, Snowflake the pet cat. How cute. The stone is so old and the name is worn off. The tombstone says, Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. A note. Great. God, why did I not then expire? Why am I here to relate the destruction of the best hope and the purest creature of Earth? It was mere days ago, at the peak of our bliss, when Clara fell ill. She complained of headaches and tiredness, so I made a bed for her and laid her down to rest. 
For the next few days, I cared for my companion just as she had cared for me and nursed her with all my love and compassion. We believed it was just a passing sickness and that it would be over shortly. Each morning we thought she was getting better and each evening we realized she'd actually gotten worse. And today, when I entered her bedroom, she was there, lifeless and inanimate, thrown across the bed, her head hanging down and her pale and distorted features half covered by her hair. In horror, I beheld the body of my Clara, my love, so lately living, so dear, so worthy. I rushed towards her and embraced her with ardor, but the deathly languor and coldness of the limbs told me that what I now held in my hands had ceased to be the Clara whom I known and loved and cherished. Alas, what foul curse lies in my gentle touch! I have lost my only child to the darkness, my husband to the devouring madness, and now my lover is a part of this world as well. Is my love truly as poisonous as my ominous name? Boxes. Yes, those are indeed boxes. <laughs> this lantern might prove to be the very first thing that actually manages to shed some light on my situation. I'll keep it. You wish. Nothing inside. <laughs> Belladonna. This little plant has caused a lot of trouble. Yeah, it sure has. For a flower, it's not particularly beautiful, but for a murder weapon, it sure is. plant, a natural object, standing in a pot, a man-made object. The plant can consume nutrition and grow bigger, and the pot can't. Neither of them can think. So what about me, then? I can think. I know that. But am I natural or man-made? That's More fun. Letters. Can someone tell me what happened to poor Clara? You just read what happened to her. Some time has passed since the demise of Clara, as I calm down and regain control over my emotions. It occurs to me that there are some mysterious circumstances concerning her death. The sickness that came over her was swift and sudden indeed. Admittedly, my own medical knowledge is limited, but it still seems to me that such an instant and terminal change in the bodily humors should not occur naturally. Could it be that she somehow ingested something that made her sick? But what? And from that line of thought, it is not a far leap to ponder if she was murdered. It was long ago that I lost track of the details of my husband's deranged research, but I do know he handles lethal substances and obscure chemicals. How easy it would have been for him to slip something into Clara's food. So then, why would he do such a thing? Did he know about our affair? We were very careful. But perchance he guessed it, despite our efforts. He would not go so far as murder based solely on a guess, would he? And the distressing truth is, I no longer have any way of telling what Wolfram is capable of. It is of vital importance that these notes never reach any eyes but my own. These are grave accusations I am scribbling down and in ways of proof I do not have anywhere to start looking. Yet the possibility is there, gloating in its simplicity. Two statues of angels. It seems a bit paradoxical to create statues depicting something that's supposed to be immaterial. Let's call them Justifer and Phi. What a marvelous mausoleum. The plaque says Francisca Canosa. I wonder who she was. Sometimes getting uh, point and click characters to go where you want is a bit of a it's challenge. An old clock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Uh, let's see, which door? Living room. Study. We'll go study first. Huh. <laughs> 
That's a lot of books. Imagine you had books filled with every possible combination of letters. I wonder how much room they would take. There's a finite amount of letters, but unless we acknowledge a maximum length of a word, there would still be an infinite number of combinations, and the library would have to be infinitely large. A stuffed raven atop a bust of Pallas Athena. What a cheerful decoration. Let's call them Annabelle and Dupin. <laughs> Look, a perfect sphere. Let's see if I can get two parallel lines to intersect. The doctor's handwriting. I know it well by now. Months have passed and I must indeed conclude the procedure was a success. The new Belladonna is certainly calmer, friendlier, and mo more docile. She gladly keeps me company in the laboratory nowadays and she's polite and pleasant in everything she does. One is tempted to describe her demeanor as lobotomized, but no. When I ask her questions, she will answer in a clear and articulated voice. She is responsive to all kinds of stimuli. Verily, I have gotten all I could ask for. The troublesome maid is gone, Belladonna's back with me, compliant as ever. Her behavior is exemplary. Our lives are returning to that idyllic past I thought lost in all aspects except one. No child giggles in these halls. But my research is proceeding rapidly, and the question presents itself. Who needs a womb to create life? I have made an unexpected observation. A side effect of the unliving condition. The household cat, a black beast, once Belladonna's loving pet, has gained a great mistrust for the latter's new form. A disquiet has fallen over the animal, and he will not go near the creation. Why is this, I wonder? Why is the lack of trust this sudden and ferocious hatred? Belladonna's appearance seems uh, to me not much unlike what the cat before so fondly gravitated towards, but evidently the beast perceives a difference. As a species, the cat has popularly been associated with witchcraft and mysticism. Their eyes do indeed strike one as remarkable. Is it perchance so that the feline oculus is capable of peering into a human soul and spirit? And that, er, and so, when faced with the created Belladonna, is distressed by the lack thereof? Yeah, foreshadowing. Uh, the worst part about this game that it belongs on does the dog die another portrait it says her name is Francisca Canosa it's the same name I saw in the mausoleum in the cemetery I wonder how she relates to the von Trauerschloss family look at all these old toys wind-up dolls music boxes and mechanical trains all around I think this used to be a private hobby of the eccentric Dr. Wolfram's, before he got into the whole corpse business. I should sit down and write a story, but with all these journals and diary pages lying around, it seems like I already may have. Alright, so... Here comes my least favorite part of the game. I'll let it stand by the fire for a while. Let's grind this plant into powder. It's thawed. The milk is now in liquid form. The milk pours easily. Is this how Clara died? Yeah. I don't enjoy doing this, but they give you literally no way to progress this story, otherwise I tried. I don't like this part. And this is what happens. What an abhorrent cat. It looks at me with pure hate in its eyes. What's that thing it's playing with? I'm not going near that horrible cat. Yeah, I have that's... to get rid of it somehow if I want to proceed. Which is why I'm not going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it some. Yeah, I know. I'm not going near that horrible. Put the damn thing on the floor. Yes, this should put an end to the grim reign of this beast. Poor kitty. Look, 
It's a key, and it has a funny tassel attached to it. No wonder the cat wanted to play with it. The animal must have managed to steal a key somehow. This is strange. This is Belladonna's signature, but the handwriting is just wrong. I write to exercise my brain. I find that my thoughts become more firm and solid if I force myself to put them down on paper. It doesn't matter what I write as long as I can learn to think again and to remember. I must try and remember. I have no idea how long I have been this way. A walking corpse, a mimicry of human life, an unmensch. This is all the doings of my despicable husband. He could not be happier, the villain. He got what he wanted, an obedient wife, a beautiful Galatea that exists solely for his pleasure. If only he knew. These notes are the center of my universe and I keep them well hidden. He doesn't know. He has no idea. The thought has not occurred to him that I might be a thinking being. And I intend to keep it that way. I am slowly and secretly, meticulously, pulling my consciousness out of a black void. At first, I truly was a mechanical toy. Responsive, never proactive. But gradually, I began to regain capacity for thought. And I quickly realized I needed to keep it a secret. These thoughts were now the only things in the world that truly belonged to me. Beginning to think again was horrible in any ways. It was even worse than the state of blissful ignorance from which I had just emerged. I had only managed to scribble down single disconnected words at a time, more emotions than thoughts, impulses perhaps. My hands and fingers were stiff and clumsy, I remember cutting myself on the sharp pen once and not being able to prevent the blood flow. I thought this would be the end for me, but surely Wolfram would notice the blood on my hands and get suspicious. But no, the self-observed fool merely stitched me up and let me go. I sometimes play with the idea of what I would have to do to prove to him that I am a person. But I won't. The monster has other plans. The door is locked. As my consciousness grows stronger, so does my hatred for my husband. Each morning he brings with me with him down to the laboratory and places me in a corner. There I will stand for the rest of the day, still as a statue, silent as death. Occasionally, he will throw me a glance or a smile. I find my body smiling warmly back, almost like a reflex, and this indoctrination disgusts me. I am a living decoration, a breathing statue of flesh, his wind-up toy, a bride, his wind-up toy bride. But little does he suspect my eyes are darting across the room, secretly and attentively following his smallest movements. I carefully memorize every step he takes, every note he writes down, every tiny detail of his ghoulish discovery. If only he knew how fast I am learning, and what a willing student I am. As of late, he has even picked up the habit of explaining his scientific work aloud. It helps him think, I suppose, and I nod and smile and give encouraging little laughs at the right places. He's muttering his darkest secrets to me, and I drink it all up. And oh, if only he knew how close he brushes with his own demise. Hundreds of times each day he is close enough for me to, for my hands to reach up and snap his neck. My strong fingers around his throat slowly scree squeezing his precious life out of him. But no matter how close he stands, my arms will not move. I am a prisoner and my own corpse staring out through glassy eyes, but unable to will any action into my own dead limbs. Call for me and I will walk. Ask me a question and I will talk. But my rotting brain is unable to inform initiatives of its own. 
I am a golem following orders. Yet, with each passing night, my willpower grows stronger. I write my thoughts down diligently and practice my mental capacities with all the resolve I have. The results are slow, but reliable. One day, soon, I will have the tenacity to strike. And as soon as the time comes, strike I will. One of these days, his lovely life-sized doll will suddenly find the power within her to execute her swift revenge. We got one more. Hello. That's a big wardrobe. I bet you could hide a corpse in there. Actually, I better not open it and check. You could probably find a couple. Let's take a look inside. The lid is shaped like a heart and has a tiny keyhole. Whatever's inside must be very precious. The mirror is completely shattered. I think someone in here didn't really like the reflection. She didn't. Is she dead? She doesn't move a muscle, yet she sits upright. She's like a mannequin of human flesh. I'm sorry, kitty. That's a lot of books. Imagine you had books filled with every possible con- Yeah. Should've went living room first. But I always go to the left. This room looks completely abandoned. I suppose this is what happens when you're down to a skeleton crew of only one maid. No matter how fantastic she is. This room looks completely- Yeah. Another journal page. This one has drops of blood on it. I, Belladonna, must think, remember, hands, fingers, write, word, words, hate. something I had to do. Nothing happens. That okay. makes no sense. I'm putting it back. Nothing happens. I think there's something to do with the mausoleum, but I don't remember how I get in. Nothing happens. That won't work. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure it could. I think there was something in the basement. I don't remember what was in the basement, but there, there was something to un open that door, I think. The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. This must be the ashes of Wolfram's son. Oh, 
been doing, so downstairs we go. Hello, Roland. Apparently that didn't work. Now is not the time. brain in a jar. I wonder what it's thinking. Nothing happens. Yeah, it just means you're not hitting it hard enough. Hello, Roland. That makes no sense. Nothing happens. Mm. May I have to look at a uh, doctor boy again? That makes no sense. Not finding any other hints. There's something in his pocket. It's a small, delicate key. He kept it in the pocket closest to his heart. I wonder what it unlocks. Yeah, we, uh, we figured that bit out. Thaw the milk. Grind the leaves, poison the cat. That was a lot of work to inspect this rather uninteresting ladder. I didn't click the ladder. Because I clicked by the ladder doesn't mean that's what I wanted to look at. I wonder if this key fits. Big There's key. a key hidden inside. A very important one. Interesting, but no. Let me put it away. Oh, I missed a note. I think I missed two. <laughs> Those eyes. Clara, it really is you. I was so certain I'd never see you again. You didn't wake up. I... I woke up. I've been wandering lost ever since, trying to find out what's going on. How are you feeling? Do you remember me? I have no memories of you, or of myself. But I found some notes lying around. I can only assume you're the one called Belladonna? I am Belladonna. Murdered and reanimated by Dr. Von Trauschloss. At first a mindless mechanical doll, but I slowly regained control over my brain. And when the time was right, I broke free. Wow, looking at I this in OBS, uh, yes, I crushed his skull. That's some uh, standing mouth animation for sure. Means. I was free at last. But where did it I It looks come fine from? on the if regular play dead, screen though. 
Was it you who brought me back? Yes, my love. You were the only thing on my mind as I stood there, alone and victorious. I had secretly watched the doctor's process, and I desperately wanted to believe that I could get you back. I unearthed your grave and carried your dead body down to the laboratory. I did everything right, to the smallest detail, but you didn't wake up. And my time was running out. I can't turn my own key, and now that I was alone in the castle, I knew my life force would run out quickly. But for all my effort, you remained dead. And with no one to keep me vital, I eventually sat down here and just stopped. But I did wake up. Yes, apparently you did. Your body had been in the ground for quite some time. Perhaps that made the reanimation process slower. But with your key powering your brain directly, you did not have to go through the drawn out sluggish wake up. I take it your cognitive powers and language have been with you from the start. Well, yes. Excellent. Then I have even improved on the doctor's method. But I doubt independent thinking and free will was ever in his interest to reproduce. Do you think you could do it again? Create more of us, you mean? Yes, I hold the secret of life and death, and I plan to use it. The experimentations must continue. And the two of us will have no place in this world. Quite right. So, we'll make us a place. Dead bodies will never be in short supply. We'll make more of our kind. A whole new race of the damned. Where do we start? I know for a fact that there's a fresh body lying out there in the Great Hall. The Doctor. His flesh, at least. We won't be using his wretched brain. I've already destroyed it in any case. You but sure did. We'll do. We will have to find a few other ingredients. Will you help me? I... Of course I will. Thank you, my love. I'll carry the body down to the laboratory and start with the preparations. And in the meantime, you can help me with a few other things. The doctor's brain is completely destroyed. I made sure of that. I don't think any of us want his villainous brain back amongst us. We're going to need to find a new one. Secondly, we will also need some clockwork parts. We have to manufacture a force to keep the dead body going. Thirdly, not only the brain, but also the head and the cranium were damaged. If we can find a new head, that would save a lot of the reconstructing effort. Okay, uh... Will we need to find a fresh human head? Yes, I've smashed up the head of Wolfram rather frivolously. I'm afraid it's beyond rescue. I was thinking of my grandmother, Francesca Canosa. I'm sure you've seen her portrait in the study. She was buried some time ago, but her cranium should be sufficiently preserved. She rests in the mausoleum in the cemetery outside, but there is a hidden way into the tomb behind the armor in the basement. I'll go take a look behind the suit of armor. Thank you. I'll start looking for the objects then. Thank you. Come talk to me if there's something you're unsure about. Journal page! A note. Failure. The attempt was a failure. I could not lure my lost lover back into her deceased corpse. All my preparations in vain. All alone now. No one to turn my key. And we have two notes left to find. Coils of rope. Yeah, I'm gonna- I don't know why we're keeping rope in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> I got some answers for that. I'm not sure you want to hear them. So we needed a skull. We needed clockwork parts, which... I see a lot of mechanical parts in there. I need to get them out somehow. So. Go back up. You tart. This 
this faithful screwdriver will do the trick. Time to turn this old clock into a slightly peculiar wardrobe. And that's fine. So there's a brain in the laboratory. We don't have to worry about that. Belladonna was right. There is a secret switch behind Roland the Poet. I need something else. Mm -hmm. We'll have to worry about that a little later, I think. For now. It's too dark down there. I won't see my hands in front of me unless I light the crypt up first. I'll just tie this rope to the lantern. Yes, I can lower the lantern into the hole. Amazing. I must be directly underneath the mausoleum in the cemetery. Journal page. I can't believe it. It's another letter. How did it end up down here? Clara! After insistent probing from my lady Belladonna, I too took to the pen to uh, come evening. Uh, the scribbling does not come as readily for me as it does for her, yet I do most certainly see the appeal in the activity. So much has happened in my life of late, my brain is overflowing with joy and secrets and disorder, and if I managed to write down a map of but a fraction of it all, that would be an enormous relief. Verily, it all centers around Belladonna, this queen regnant of the castle who has turned her benevolent face towards me and thus filled my person with happiness I previously thought unimaginable. I still remember the first time I saw her, standing next to her husband when I took up work in the household. I remember how she seemed to me to glow. The two of them lost a child shortly after that, and the tragedy would linger in the castle for a long time. All the other servants started to leave one by one, but as much as I wanted to, I found myself unable. I kept postponing my departure with each new day, and I found myself dancing around Belladonna's claim, drawn to it as strongly as I had been from that first glance. By the time she finally recovered from her melancholy, I was the only one left in the castle, and it was at this time the miracle happened. Belladonna saw me in a new way. This tempestuous affair, galloping and world-shaking, and yet so quiet, so hidden. This castle is ours to rule as we please, but only as long as we do not arouse the suspicion of the grave-robbing goblin in the basement. It's as if I stepped into one of the fairy stories my grandmother used to tell. But Nana's stories always ended with someone uh, losing their head or being eaten alive. Though seemingly everlasting, this bliss of ours, a seed of doubt grows in my heart. Belladonna is married, after all, and who am I to break their wedlock? There is this not a happy union, true, but I am seducing my love to break her vows and soil her soul. What wretched ruin that will bring upon us. For a long while, Belladonna was all I dreamed about, my queen and goddess. My deepest wish for her was to let me into her life and let me worship her. I, I thought I would give up anything for that, but now that I'm here, I wonder if I've sacrificed too much. Belladonna comes from high society, and she doesn't realize just how much she takes for granted. It is still clear who's the lady and who is the servant. Can I keep on living like this, or will I have to do the unthinkable and leave her? I made Belladonna promise not to read anything I wrote, and looking at what I've just put down in the ink, the weight of that promise is clear. I have forged into words thoughts I did not know I had, and it's vital that these pages remain secluded from prying eyes. Secrets upon secrets. I shall hide this letter inside the old armor in the basement, for whom I call Roland the Bard, where I doubt anyone will find it. I'm descending into that dungeon as soon as I'm done here, and I'll hide this note on my way, as the master has asked me to fetch for him a certain uh, plant from the greenhouse. As strange as this whole situation is, I must still obey his request, if only to keep up appearances. 
And we're missing just one. Here's Francisca's coffin, but the lid is much too heavy for me to lift. Maybe I could break it open, but I'll need some sort of big hammer or mace for that. Well, fortunately for you. Things one does for love. Now to carefully remove the head. It's remarkably well preserved. Yep. A little ghoulish, but... Ah, uh, look at the blood. There's one last note, and I don't know where it is. I'll let Belladonna handle that. Alright, so, here you go. Thank you, dear. Here Thank you are. You, dear. And I think I'm gonna need that ladder. I was all the way back in the study. And maybe getting the ladder knocks loose the last page. I don't remember. Thaw the milk, grind the leaves, poison the cat. That was a lot of work to inspect this rather uninteresting. Can you not thaw grab the it? Milk, thaw the milk, grind. I guess not. All right, so clearly I am missing some things. That's a big wardrobe. At least the view is nice from up here. Alright, so nothing else in here. There seems to be something else we need the screwdriver and or the bone saw for. Hell if I remember what they are. This is all just sheeted furniture. There's nothing else in here of note. The name on the plaque is Lucas von Trauerschloss. Yeah, I guess I'm going back down to the basement. Why'd you get rid of that stick? of a deranged murderer, the decomposed head of an old lady, the brain of a small child. How could this possibly go wrong? Oh, apparently I don't need a ladder to get it. Delightful. Thank you, dear. The creation is complete. All we need to do now is force life into these dead limbs. That big switch on the wall initiates the procedure. Will you have the honor, my dear? Gladly. 
And the only question is, where is that last note? The time has come. I will. I didn't mean to cut her off, but I think she was saying, I've wanted to pull this since I've seen it. Since I first woke up. It's alive! did bring back the kitty, so the kitty got a little bit of justice. Not a whole lot, but a bit. I'm gonna have to throw a sensor bar on this. Belladonna. It was made in 2015. Uh, I'm not sure why OBS was picking up uh, Belladonna's mouth animations like that and reading those lines. I'm not even sure if they'll show up on video. I hope they don't, but you never know. It's one of my uh, favorite point and click games. I love, I love the dark and spooky shit. I love Frankenstein shit. Uh, and I wanted to do something kind of light and easy for today. Let me go ahead and uh, just see if I can find that last note for us to read. I'm sure it's somewhere. All right, so I uh, tried to look for like a wiki with the note and I couldn't find anything. So I guess that one's just going to have to be a mystery until I play this again in probably another three years. It's one of those uh, where you just kind of have to forget most of the things that happen and then you can play it again. But yeah, that was Belladonna. It was a spooky little game. I got this uh, in 2020, despite it releasing in 2015. Uh, <laughs> Eventually, I want to customize it all to look like Clara. Trying to find the right doll, though. That's a challenge. There's not really a whole lot of uh, normal colored Monster High dolls, to put it lightly. I would have to get a collector's edition, and I'm not customizing a collector's edition doll. I never made a doll of the goth girl from one of the movies, and that's sad. She would have been great for customs. She would have been great for this custom. But she's got the right body type to be a Monster High custom, doesn't she? The only problem uh, would be figuring out all the clockwork pieces after that and how to smooth out the head instead of having hair plugs everywhere. But anyway, that was it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!